Hi, this is Dr. Linda Davis, and today I want to show you how to add a YouTube video into a PowerPoint slideshow. First, you can have your see your slide here. It may the slideshow may be already underway. And the first thing we have to do is to add the developer tab, which you probably do not have active right now. To add the developer tab, you want to go up to the big office button and you want to go to the bottom of this particular screen where it says PowerPoint Options. Click on PowerPoint Options. Most likely it'll open up on the popular setting and when you see that activated you want to look at the selections. Now one of the selections says Show Developer Tab in the ribbon. It's probably not checked. At this point I want you to go ahead and check that and say OK and that's all it takes to get the, the developer tab to now show up on your screen and we'll use come back to that in just a minute the next thing we want to do is to um, go out to YouTube which means let's just launch an internet connection and go into YouTube just type YouTube and then if you just put control enter that's a quick way to put the www and the dot com on there at the same time and let's say we're doing a PowerPoint on Claude Monet so we'll just put that artist's name in select uh, search and see if there's any YouTube videos on that particular artist. And we find one here, Claude Monet. That may fit the bill, so let's look at it. See if it's tastefully done. Most companies these days um, have a um, professional presence on YouTube, so it is possible to get quality videos from YouTube on different subjects in different companies. Now, all we really need from the YouTube website is the URL in the address bar. So we're just going to click once to activate the entire URL and then right click to say copy. Once you copy that, then we can go back to our PowerPoint slide. And with the developer tab, click on the developer tab. Now, lots of tools in here the only tool you need right now is where it says more controls and it uh, is the picture of the wrench and the hammer crossing if you'll click on that it gives you quite a few choices here to make this work we need shockwave flash objects you'll just go down to the S's and start looking for it shockwave flash object click on that say okay now your cursor will change at this point now it looks like a plus sign it is waiting for you to draw whatever size screen you want for your YouTube video to be displayed in. It just becomes a big white box with an X through it. Now, the next step is to right click on the, anywhere on the white box and you want to go to properties. So if you go to properties, click on that you may have a very s tiny little screen like this but if you just pull from the corner it will reveal all the um, tools in here now the only line we need to be concerned with here is the movie line so in the second column of movie this is where we want to paste the URL that we pulled from YouTube now we're not done yet we do have to do a bit of edit on this URL I want you to delete watch question mark We also need to delete the equal sign, so place your cursor there where you can delete the equal sign. Now before you leave this spot, you also want to put a slash in, that is a forward slash, to replace that equal sign. You can also choose to loop it, loop meaning true, not to loop it would be false, uh, things like that. Now there is no save on this particular screen once you make your changes. All you need to do is exit out, 
Now initially you will not see anything change on your screen. It is active when you actually launch the slide. So once I launch the slide, I'll just start the slideshow from where I'm at right now. Um, notice that, and sometimes you have to give it a few seconds for the video to display itself. Now this does take an active internet connection anytime you do this for it to display. The, notice the play button is here and if I want to play this video within my PowerPoint all I have to do is hit play. And I have all the same control where I can stop it and start it as necessary. And we'll hit uh, pause and finish this episode right here. Thank you for watching. Hi, this is Dr. Linda Davis, and I would today like to go through how to access LexisNexis from our network system. I'm going to launch the internet first, and then uh, my first page will be the links to our intranet system, which for research databases where you will find LexisNexis click on research databases. The one we want to use today is LexisNexis and we have a direct link so click on that now the one that works best for our particular project is the one entitled Get Company Info and we can just pop a name in here for example let's use Microsoft today because we are looking for uh, information on annual revenue and annual net income once we type Microsoft in or by the uh, ticker symbol either way hit go and at this point we'll get a list of you know possible companies that w met our search criteria of course uh, we want the name Microsoft Corporation MSFT so we're going to click on that link this may take a second or two to come up and this first screen is just a lot of general information about the um, s basically a snapshot of Microsoft's current position and we really want more detailed information on their financials so we'll go over to the left side where you'll see a link for financial information I want you to click on that and toward the top you'll see the multi-year summary in dollars and this is the part we really want we want we have sales which is another word for revenue and we have net income and at this point we'll stop the video here because you have arrived where you need to gather these uh, um, five years of information that will then plug into an Excel spreadsheet.